Hey, welcome guys. This is going to teach you how to make an RJ45 Cat 6 cable. So the idea is basically to have a cable, maybe like this, with no end. You want to turn this into this. Well, except without the uh, annoying rubber part right here. But this is what I'm going to teach you in this video. So what you need to get started is a Cat 6 Ethernet wire, a uh, crimping tool. It's going to clamp it together. Uh, a lot of good crimping tools will also have a wire cutter built into it, so that's also useful if you can get one. Um, you can tend to get these from like a home hardware store of some kind, so uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, that kind of thing. And of course, the ends that you're going to need. Uh, so you'll notice that this has the actual clip, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. And of course, there's like these little uh, bracket teeth you're going to have to slip it into later on. So this is not difficult. It's, or, or rather, it's not complex, but it can be very annoying and will require a lot of patience, especially if you're not familiar with this, right? And you'll understand in a bit just why. What I basically do is just cut off a bit of the outer layer of this wire. But be careful because you don't want to cut the wires that are inside, right? So I usually do about just a few inches, nothing too major, right? So once again, you don't want to cut too deep. Uh, you might notice that a lot of it is cut and you have some, I have some pieces that are not. I did that on purpose because at this point I just kind of try to wiggle it around. See, most of it is cut. Um, it's good enough to just mean it. I'm putting very little pressure and pulling it off and it just comes off easily. So this, is, this is the idea of what you want to accomplish. So you have eight wires inside, right? Kind of split them up. So you have a set of eight wires. You have... Um, this pair, a pair, a pair, a pair, and of course you have this little film in between, and of course this little strand over on the edge. The idea between this and this is to kind of add some filter in the wire, so there's less environmental exterior noise. So the less noise you have, the better the signal will be. That's what this is trying to do. So what I tend to do is I just kind of fold them all to one side, right? It's out of the way. And then take the cutter part, of my crimping tool. At this point, what you want to do is basically unwind them. And we continue from there. So now that we got the wires unraveled, there's one thing I almost forgot to mention. Um, when you first take off this outer layer, this peel, and you take it off, try to um, bend the wires over just a little bit and take a look. Do you see any exposed wiring inside these? because this is still yet covers, right? If you can take a look, if the camera will focus on it, see a little copper inside and uh, you can just kind of barely see it. If any of that copper is exposed, you know that this is not good. You're gonna have to chop off this whole thing right here, scrap it, start again, maybe peel off a little bit of, of the layer here. So it's important because that'll prevent any uh, environmental noise that could make the signal weak or prevent any signal from going through at all. Uh, in addition, we'll also be using the B formatting of wiring. Uh, there's an A and B formatting. B is, is the most common. A is used in very special circumstances, so we'll be using the, the B formatting, just as an FYI. So what I've done, you'll notice that I actually cut off uh, a big chunk of the wire to make it significantly shorter. The shorter it is, the easier it is to work with, and you understand shortly as to why. So I've actually arranged the wires in a very specific order, and that order is going to be listed over here. It's white orange, orange, white green blue white blue green white brown brown so you're gonna have to arrange them in that particular order and it can be a little bit tricky because the wires are kind of they've been twisted very tight so the easiest thing to do is kind of arrange them kind of flex them a little bit you know help straighten them out a little bit you want to get in that specific order and believe me when i say this the shorter the wires the better you don't want it too short you basically at the end the goal is to have it fit like this, right? So we might end up chopping off a little bit more, but the reason I, I made it quite short is to get all those wires into this tiny little thing. Now, one thing a lot of people don't mention is that for Cat6, this little extra bracket is required. Uh, I'm trying my best to make the camera focus. And what you wanna do is, if, if it is possible, there's like a little bump on this thing. You wanna have the bump on this little uh, gate, if you will, up. So you can kind of see it now. So the bump is on the top side, whereas the bottom side is flat, all right? And when you have it in that order, you want to have it so that 
the bump is facing up and orange is the closest to you and that's the way you're gonna slide it in there okay so remember bump is up orange is closest to you slides right in so we're gonna have to kind of play around with this for a little bit Get them slide here we go so you got it what I tend to do is that after I got it in um, I double check the order and the reason I do this is because sometimes it, this is such a tight fit, you don't want any of the wires to kind of jump across each other. So here's the bump on the top, bottom is flat, and white orange is on this side here. So I slid it up as close as possible. What you want to do now is cut any excessive wire. And now for the actual crimping. Uh, there's a lot of satisfaction when you do this, it feels good for some reason. So the idea here is, remember the bumps are facing up here on this little plastic bracket. And if you have the bump facing up, you want the clip at the bottom. So see why. There's actually a little gap in here for the bump to face upwards. So let's just get in there, you guys will see. You kind of see the bump is facing up. Just gonna squeeze the wire in there a little bit. See that it just barely gets in there, but it does fit. And when you push it in this notch, when it finally reaches, you might feel and hear a little tiny click noise, right? It's a bit faint to hear. There we go. Another thing to do, this is, this is very difficult, but you wanna try to gauge, do all the wires look as close as possible to the front. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is take your crank tool, get the wire ready, and you should see a, a notch that's available free here. That's where this little clip is gonna go in. All right, it's like a little puzzle piece. Kinda slip it in there. Okay, make sure it's snug in there. You don't wanna crimp it incorrectly. It's in there, give it a little push, just double check. Give it a nice, good squeeze. And I usually tend to crimp it twice, just in case, just to be sure. And sometimes it kind of gets a little stuck in there, snug. And that's it, done. This will not come off. Even if I try to pull it, it's not gonna be easy. So, that's how you build a Cast6 RJ45 plug. So if you're like me and you did a renovation, you ran some Cat6 wiring throughout your basement, for example, and you need to create some face plates, that is a separate process apart from this, and I have a video on how to do that. The link is in the video description. So that's it for me. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.